Welcome to episode 000 of Sharing Life Lessons. I am your host Hamida and I want to bring you stories. I want to bring you stories from around the world, from little kids, from teenagers, from parents and from grandparents. There will be no race, color, professional, sexual orientation, age or religious criteria. I will bring you stories from whoever wants to share their life lesson with us through their story because we want to have fun with your stories and we want to learn from them. The purpose of episode 000 is twofold. One, I want my listeners to know their host, and so I will be giving you a little bit about me. Second, I also want to share with my listeners as to how I got inspired to create and share this podcast. I was born in Bombay, India in a family of 5. I had my dad, my mom, and my two older brothers. Therefore, I was the youngest and only daughter and the youngest and only sister. Just by that you can assume that I must have been spoiled. And you're right. I was spoiled, but in a really good kind of way. My mother was a disciplinarian. and she had established strong guardrails for me as long as i stayed within the guardrails and as long as i was disciplined about my daily activity and my school work i pretty much could do everything i was never shown any limit, limits i was never told that there was anything that i was incapable of doing my father was my hero may his soul rest in peace He taught me how to love. He taught me how to laugh. He taught me how to take those chances in life. And most of all, he taught me how to love people. And to date, that has stayed with me and I love people. My older brother was a bit of a philosopher and a poet. He was the one who taught me how to love reading. In fact, he enforced my reading habits and made sure that I read, read as many and as varied books as I could. I could sit for hours listening to his philosophical debates and discussions. My middle brother on the other hand was exactly the opposite. My mother told my mother called him the most naughty amongst the three of us. He taught me how to play soccer. He taught me how to play cricket. Sometimes he used to bribe me into writing his notes for his teachers in a better way because his handwriting was atrocious and he would get more points on his homework if I wrote it in my handwriting and he would bribe me and allow me to play with his friends and for me that was bliss because as a little sister what would be better than not only to play with play with her older brother but also to play with her older brother's friends so you can see that each family member had a significant impact in my life my mother taught me discipline and hard work my father taught me to love people and help them no matter what From my older brother, oldest brother, I learned to lo- love Kabir, an Indian mystic poet, and Rumi, a Persian poet and a Sufi master. From my middle brother, I learned to be bold and boisterous and stand up for myself through the games that I played with him and his friends. And now enters my grandmother. My grandmother passed away when I, when I was eight years old, but before that, I remember. snuggling into my grandmother's bed and listening to her fairy tales her bedtime stories and those also had an impact on me the stories that my grandmother told me were no ordinary stories they were well thought out and fascinating there was always something to learn from every story because i was 8 years old when she passed away i don't remember most of the stories but i do remember a few and one story particularly stands out for me this is how it goes a jeweler goes to the king of the village with a big box with two huge stones in it one was a diamond and one was not a diamond with the permission of the king he challenged everyone in the darbar and the darbar is like a town hall where everyone's present from the nobles and the riches to the commoners and he said if there's anyone here who will tell me which one is the real diamond and if they're right then i will give that diamond to the king's treasure treasury and if it's not right then the king will have to pay me the value of this diamond 
Now, the king was a good king, but uh, he was intrigued with this challenge. And he added, and he said, if there is anyone who will give the right answer, I will reward them handsomely. But if they give the wrong answer, then they will have to leave my kingdom with their families never to return again. And so everyone waited for someone to take the challenge and then no one took the challenge till one blind man raised his hand and asked permission from the king to take the challenge. The, per, the, the king approved. He went up to the box and he touched both the stones and he told the jeweler that the one on the left is the diamond. Now the jeweler was pretty surprised and said he was right. But now he was dying to know how the blind man knew which one was the right stone. When the blind man was asked, he said, here we are in the courtyard in the middle of a hot summer afternoon. And so when I touched the glass stone, it seemed heated up from the heat of the sun to me. But when I touched the diamond, it was cool and was not heated up, although the sun was throwing the same amount of heat on it. The king was very happy and the blind man was handsomely rewarded. Isn't this story intriguing, especially to a child? But that's not where it stops. My grandmother then went on to tell me, so what do you want to be? Do you want to be the glass stone in life or do you want to be the real diamond in life? Because when things get heated up for you in life and there are hardships, when there are calamities, if you get heated up as well, then you will prove to be a glass stone. But if you remain calm and collected and united with whoever is around you and face that calamity and hardship, then you will prove to be the true diamond. So you can see that the influence that my grandmother had on my life was this love for stories. I continued this tradition with my children and passed on life lessons to them through stories as well. Sometimes I repeated the stories and they would say, Mommy, haven't you already told us this story? And I would say yes, because the lesson needs to be reinforced. There are so many out there who love stories, who love to listen to and tell stories, and therefore I choose, choose stories to be the medium of my journey with my listeners. This podcast is called Sharing Life Lessons for a reason. The stories that I'm about to bring to you are not just fairy tales and bedtime stories, but they are real life stories. Let's together learn from others what they have learned for themselves. Many may have spent several years, and others may have encountered hardships to learn these lessons while others have learned things through everyday life experiences. Let's hear it from them directly so we can adapt in our lives what works for us. In the 1800s, Margaret Fuller said, if you have knowledge, let others light their candles in it. This is the goal of this podcast series. Listeners, please subscribe to be notified about upcoming episodes. Also, write to me at sharinglifelessons101 at gmail.com with comments, or if you would like to share your own life lessons in future episodes. I look forward to bringing you a very special guest in the next episode of Sharing Life Lessons.